Hello and welcome to episode, I just checked this, um, 113 of the Stress Knits podcast. My name is Stacy, also known as Stress Knits Yarn on Instagram and Stress Knits over on Ravelry. Today is April 25th and I only know that because of the Miss Congeniality thing. Um, yeah, so it's April 25th. I don't know where April went. March was a million years long and I feel like I blinked and April was over. Crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm coming to you from Metro Detroit, Michigan. It is a slightly overcast day, but it's mid 50s, low 60s, so it's really, it's nice. Um, Doug is sleeping. He had to go to urgent care today because of a tooth. So he's napping, which is good. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is, I don't know, it's just been an interesting week. Um, Eliza's trying to go down for a nap, but she's throwing herself all over her crib. So if you hear some giggles, that's what that is. Um, Esther is in the living room. Esther is my pug. And yeah, and I'm Stacy. I don't know if I said that already. Yeah, so we, I don't know, what's going on? How are you? I hope you are crafting because I have been inspired to do a lot. I don't know. It's something about one being stuck at home, which isn't different from my normal life. I don't get out a lot because I am a stay at home mom and I run a business um, from my house. So don't get out a lot, but that's not really changing. Um, I'm starting to think about um, cleaning out my flower beds and doing some stuff there because um, in Michigan you really shouldn't plant <laughs> until May um, because we just had snow this past week so you really don't want to plant anything until May anyway. I've always been told um, Mother's Day weekend is kind of that so I have a bunch of seeds to plant and that would be exciting. So I'm thinking about doing that and starting to clean out flower beds this week once all of the rain is over. And then um, we are just kind of making our house feel homier. We have had paint for months that we have not touched. And so we're finally going to get around to painting our bedroom and Eliza's bedroom. Um, so we're going to we're going to be doing that. I am reorganizing Eliza's toys and getting new toys. I am reading, I don't know if you care about this at all, but I'm actually reading this book, The Montessori Toddler. And it's, it reads like a textbook, but I've been really researching Montessori and Waldorf toys and like all that kind of stuff to help stimulate her a little more. Um, so I've been slowly cycling through some toys and once things have shipped and I've received them I will be um, storing the toys that she's playing with now downstairs and then having the new toys upstairs because I don't like having too much clutter and yeah and I'm also going to be making some toys for her so I bought a bunch of felt balls to do like color sorting which is really exciting and I'm also going to make some felted ball garland for reusable um, birthday decorations because her birthday is coming up too and Doug's birthday. Doug's birthday is first. His birthday is May 7th so that's coming up quick. Um, yeah so just making some reusable birthday decorations instead of using all of the toy, uh, not toy, the uh, paper streamers and stuff. Yes, like I'm just doing that stuff. Um, I've been watering plants a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, just trying to stay sane, trying to keep my brain moving, trying to keep my body moving. I know I've talked about this before, but if you are into dancing or just kind of enjoy that kind of workout, 
Uh, highly recommend Ryan Heffington on Instagram every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. He does an hour long dance workout and the first like 10-15 minutes is a warm up. You do some yoga, you do some Pilates kind of moves um, and then it's just dancing and you have props. <laughs> <laughs> like you just, I sing into a water bottle a lot. It's just so much fun and it's just a way to unwind and get some energy out. I dance with Eliza. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. And there are special guests that pop up. Like I think today, Saturday, Emma Stone is going to be guest um, on the Instagram live with him. Uh, Pink was on there with him two weeks ago, last week, something like that. And so it's just been, it's just been a lot of fun. So highly recommend that. I will put his Instagram handle in the link, the link, the description below. I feel like I'm rambling mm. <laughs> because I feel like I haven't talked to another human being in a very long time, even though I'm talking to a camera. And even though I live with my daughter and my husband, I don't know. It just feels nice to talk to you. I've missed you. Oh, so now that I'm off that tangent, <laughs> Um, let's talk about the giveaway. So we hit 6,000 subscribers on YouTube, which I still can't get over. I feel kind of giddy. I think my father-in-law is doing some lawn work across the street. So if you hear that, that's what that is. Um, <laughs> but what was I saying? Yes, 6,000 subscribers. What? I... Still, don't understand. I don't understand because I'm a mess. <sighs> anyway, so we had 238 entries into the Ravelry group um, giveaway page, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how to describe that. Um, for this skein of Barnyard Knits in the old coin colorway. And the winner is number two. I forgot to write down, but I believe it was 212. I wrote her username down. I did not write the number. I think it was 212. Um, and it is Killy Loves Amos. So if that is you, congratulations. Please message me on Ravelry with your shipping address, and I will get this out to you next week when I do my or Doug's post office run. So congratulations. Thank you to everybody who entered and told me what you were enjoying what was making you happy. Um, Killy Loves Amos said that she was enjoying um, spending time with her husband and crafting and also catching up with friends over uh, video chats. So that's really cool. That's a great way to stay grounded. Video chat has been wonderful. Um, so congratulations. Um, I'm assuming your name is Killy. Not sure. <laughs> I... Y'all, my brain is not, I did not write down any of the important stuff. No show notes. We're just going to do it. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So, I have a finished object. What? I finished my Where Does the Good Go socks. See, I have two. This is my brand new colorway, Where Does the Good Go on my favorite base, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. It is just the best. If you see a little gnat flying around, sorry. I think one of my plants has fungus gnats and I'm waiting for some supplies to deal with that. It's just, it's what happens when you have plants. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, so just a basic vanilla sock. Um, I've talked about my vanilla sock recipe before, but I am going to put it on Patreon, um, just to kind of have somewhere to get it. It's a, such a simple sock recipe. I'm also thinking about doing a How I Knit My Socks video tutorial. Not sure if that'll ever happen, but I'm thinking about it. Yeah, but I don't know. This colorway just is, makes me so happy. The only pooling happened um, on the gusset, which I assumed would happen since the uh, um, stitch count increases so much at the gusset because I do a heel flap and gusset 
Heel turn. <laughs> Ooh. Words. Okay. Yes. So it's just a happy sunshine color. It is a golden yellow with swaths of pink and peach and mint. And there's some lavender that happens when the pink and the mint overlap. And it's just... I love it so much. So these flew off the needles. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I've been really enjoying vanilla socks lately. It's something mindless. I don't have to think about it until I get to the heel turn. And then I don't have to think about it until the decrease. Um, so I see a lot of vanilla socks happening <laughs> the next few weeks slash months. So yeah, where's the good go? Stress knits yarn. I will be restocking this colorway in the shop. Yes, there is that. Um, speaking of vanilla socks, I showed you the finished one last week. This is my SSDGM sock. Also stress knits, also my favorite base. Same recipe. And then I cast on the second. And I just started the, the leg. Here's the second one. Hopefully this will be done by next time and I can have two new pairs of socks. So excited. Um, yeah, so SSDGM on favorite. It's just a great springy, speckly color. I don't know, I just really, <laughs> I love the way this turned out. It's such a happy sock and I love my favorite base so much. That's why it's called my favorite base. Um, next, let's talk about the Rift by Jacqueline C. Slack. So I'm hosting a knit along. It is running from the first day of spring, which has already passed, to the first day of summer, which <laughs> I say this every time. I still haven't looked it up. I have a calendar. Why am I not looking at my planner? I have so, do you guys also collect notebooks and just have like random things in each one? This is my planner. So let's jump to June. The first day of summer is the 20th this year, but we're just gonna go to the 21st. We're just gonna do that. So from now through June 21st, <laughs> Uh, we are knitting the Rift by Jacqueline C. Slack. It is a T pattern, but there are options for long sleeves. There are bust start options, a custom fit bicep option, and two different neckline options. Amazing, crazy amount of customization. Yes, so here is where I am. I am using Stress Knit Sport, which is a base that I only do custom orders on. And this is my grubby colorway, which is one of my absolute favorites. I could knit an entire wardrobe in grubby. And that is exactly what it looks like. Just right here. That's exactly what it looks like. Um, I just finished the bust starts, which was achieved through short rows, which is really, really cool. Here's the front. You really can't tell what it is because it is German short rows. In case anybody was wondering, I'm knitting, I think it's the 56 inch size because I wanted something with a lot of positive ease, but I did not <laughs> get anywhere close to gauge. So this is going to be small. And you know what? It might just end up having to be a sample, which is fine with me because I'm really enjoying the knit. I contemplated ripping it out and casting one on in DK. I even swatched for it, but I didn't get gauge on DK either. I need to go either up to a worsted weight or up a needle size. This is knit on a US 8, and I was still getting five and a half stitches um, per inch, and you are supposed to get around four stitches per inch. I think it's 20. Yeah, because it's 20 over no, I'm okay. I could totally do one out of DK. I, my math was not thinking straight. I could totally do it in DK because I think it's 20 stitches over four inches. 
So I actually might knit a second one. This is my DK base in No Trail to Follow. This was originally going to be a Ripple Bralette DK, but I just, I started a Ripple Bralette and fingering and I love it, but knitting two by two rib over and over and over again is just not what I want to do right now. So I think I might knit another Rift in No Trail to Follow on DK. So that is actually what I might do with this once I finish this rift. Um, because it is just, it's the perfect pattern. <laughs> it's one of those things where if this was a ready to wear um, thing that I found in a store, I feel like I would buy at least two. Cause do you guys do that too? When you find something you really like and it fits really well, that you buy like two mm. <laughs> of them, either in the same color or in a different color. I do that all the time. I did that with this tank top. Um, mm. <laughs> it's just, it's one of those things where I just, I love the way it fits and it just kind of becomes a uniform. And if you are a returning viewer of the podcast, one, hi. Mm. <laughs> and hi, new viewers. Um, I basically wear the same thing all the time. It's always like a blue button up. This is a button up t-shirt, not a long sleeve, a tank top or a t-shirt that's slightly oversized and then leggings. It's kind of my uniform. I stay at home most of the time and it makes me feel comfortable. Um, I feel like this could be a uniform for me. So this is the Rift. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to knit another one. We'll see how this fits. It might fit, I have no idea. I did the math and I don't think it will fit <laughs> or it's gonna be really tight, which is just really not my style at all. Um, yeah, but I am in the process of separating the front and the back and doing all of the sleeve stuff. I'm going to be doing um, the boat neck neckline on both the front and the back. Um, just, oh, I love this so much. I really want to knit another garment in grubby already. It's just beautiful. Not to toot my own horn, but I really, really love it. Um, I knit four extra inches on the body here. So the front, I believe, was around 12 inches, and the back was 13 when it calls for eight and nine inches. So it'll still be slightly cropped, but nothing too crazy. So that is my Rift by Jacqueline C. Slack. I hope you join in on this knit along. It is so wonderful. Um, the finished object thread is already, I just posted it and we already have one um, entry in there. So if you want to use stress knits yarn, that's great. It'll get you an extra entry, but it is not necessary at all. You don't need to use any stress knits yarn to participate. Um, yeah, and then the prizes are four skeins of stress knits yarn on either my favorite base or my singles base in whatever color way you would like, and a mini skein kit. So yeah, so join us. Um, it's been a lot of fun to see everybody's riffs come along and what colorways people are choosing. That is my Rift, <laughs> I really like it. And then I picked up my Cozy Classic Raglan. I was craving something fuzzy and I really want to cast on the Vintage 83 by Andrea Mowry, but um, I needed to dye yarn for it because I want it to also be a shop sample and to kind of show off my cloud base, which I really, really love. And, um, I just didn't have any so I had to when I ordered for the shop update I ordered um, an extra bag of each so I could dye up some stuff for myself and I'm super super excited about that so I was craving something fuzzy so I picked up my cozy classic raglan by Jessie May and here it is so I um, I tacked down I have, I'm alternating skeins right now, so I have four balls attached to this sweater. 
Um, yes. I'm obsessed. I am obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. So I, oh, I need to tack down this a little bit. Um, I knit the collar double and I folded it over and just tacked it down on the inside. Um, yeah, super easy. I know there are other ways to do it, but that's just the easiest way that I have found and it works well. So that's why I did it that way. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to say about this. I have knit from the, you can't see that, um, the stitch marker down. So it's about two inches past the arm separation. So now I'm just kind of cooking. I have this much left of my first ball and I just attached the second skeins. Um, this is my accidental Gemini colorway, which was my special colorway for my daughter Eliza's first birthday and proceeds went to the March of Dimes. Um, I am doing that again this year. I am developing the colorway and I think I got it and I'm really excited about it. So stay tuned for that. That will be happening in June um, because I like to do it the length we were in the hospital. So from her birthday, June 14th to July 1st is when that will be in the shop. And again, proceeds will go to March of Dimes super excited about it but this is just such a special colorway and you know I really I love it I think this is something I'm going to wear a lot in the fall I think I'm knitting the 1x size but I'm getting closer to large measurements because my gauge is super weird right now um I think I'm a bit tight <laughs> right now um yeah I think just stress and everything because usually I'm a pretty average knitter, but I'm kind of leaning on the tight side right now. So everything's just a little smaller. <laughs> um, yeah, but this, it's still gonna fit. I've tried it on, it works. Um, and once I block it, I think I'll get a little, a little growth out of it. But yeah, I love the color. <sighs> it just, it makes me, so happy and it's just such a special colorway and this is such an amazing pattern <laughs> i highly recommend it to everybody it is size inclusive you can knit it with mohair or you can knit it um, at a dk at a dk it's a dk weight gauge so you could knit it with a fingering plus mohair or fingering plus surrey or you could knit it with just a dk and it's just so beautiful so simple it's exactly what I love this is something I can see myself knitting a few times um, not necessarily always with mohair I think the next one I will knit with my cloud base and then I will probably also do just a regular DK one but I really like it I can see myself wearing this a lot in the fall with a pair of skinny jeans um, yeah I'm really, I'm really happy I did the folded neckline. Yes, so here it is. I can't stop showing it because I love this colorway so much. I am going to dye it for the next shop update because I just, it makes me so happy. Mm, love it, love it, love it. Yeah, and that's everything I'm working on. <laughs> um, like I said, I really want to cast on a Vintage 83 by Andrea Mowry. Um, I really want to cast on a throw over and I might be dyeing up some yarn for that as well. But I just, I don't know, I just really want to finish things at the same time. So I'm trying to focus on getting the Rift and the Cozy Classic Raglan done. Sorry if you can hear that. Esther, who is my dog, she we have a tent for Eliza in our living room because that's also the playroom and we put a bunch of like pillows and stuffed animals and when Eliza is down for her nap or sleeping for the night Esther goes into it and she like kind of digs 
to get the pillows and everything where she wants it and then she just falls asleep in the tent so that's what she's doing right now um yeah but i am focusing on finishing um my cozy classic raglan and my rift right now and then once at least one of them are done i will cast something new on i am super excited that with the rift i don't really have to worry about um sleeves which is really exciting once i'm done i just have to do i think just ribbing on the sleeves and it's over and so yeah i think that is what i'm going to put a lot of my energy into while this is uploading i will probably do the separation of the front and the back for the sleeves yeah so um yeah, I talked about what's going on. I talked about knitting. Um, we did the giveaway. We talked about the knit along. All that's left is shop news. So if you are not interested, that's perfectly fine. And I will talk to you next time. And if you are interested, let's chat for a little bit. So one, holy cow, holy cow, this last shop update. What you are all... <coughs> I think it fell. Everything's fine. Okay, so <laughs> gosh, my family's a mess. <laughs> um, yes, the shop update. I am blown away by your support. Like when orders were coming in. So I always get really nervous about shop updates and I appreciate everyone that's like, you shouldn't have to worry. I do. Um, it is, it's, it's nerve wracking because you have no idea what people want. You have no idea what people are going to buy. If people are going to buy, this is such an uncertain time for everybody. And the fact that people showed up and supported my business just means it means the world so um i'm really paying attention at um what you guys are going for so the next shop update is going to be a whole lot of my favorite base because it's almost gone. There's like six skeins left. Um, and a whole lot of cloud, which is my Surrey alpaca, and a whole lot of mini skeins. Um, that's what everyone has been asking for. That is what sold out quick, the quickest. So there will be a bunch of mini skein kits. So much favorite and so much Surrey alpaca. I was toying with the idea of doing a pre-order for my cloud base, which is the Surrey, um, but my mill keeps selling out of that base. It's super popular, popular right now. I feel like every designer is creating with it. I know, um, so like Andrea Mowry's new pattern, I think Caitlin Hunter has a few patterns with it. It's like the color work. Um, Tristan of Dragon Horde is designing with it. Just so many people are working with it. And rightfully so, it is the most beautiful base. I have a bunch of it in front, not a bunch, I have a few skeins in front of me. This is Palm Lines. And it is, it's a cloud. That's why I called it cloud. It is fluffy. It is soft. And if you don't have an alpaca allergy, this is it. Um, I do love mohair. I love the way mohair takes dye. I think it's beautiful. But mohair is not for everybody. It makes people itchy. It um, kind of gets everywhere. And cloud just isn't, isn't that way. And I think people are finally realizing this, which is really exciting because I started dyeing this um, January of last year so January of 2019 and it is just the best base and I'm so glad people are giving it its rightful due because it's a beautiful
beautiful. It's so beautiful. Um, yeah, I just want to knit everything in it. Like, I'm having that reaction that so many people had to mohair with the cloud base where I just want to add it to every project. So that's why I'm going to dye a bunch of it. And that's also why I'm not doing pre-orders because my mill is selling out constantly. <laughs> like, when I went to um, order the yarn for my next update, um, I got all the favorite and all that stuff and all the minis and I went to go put cloud in my cart and it was gone and there was no like do back this day so I kept the page up up on my laptop and I refreshed it multiple times a day and when I saw it back I bought a bunch of it so there will be a bunch <laughs> in the shop um, but what is left in the shop there is one skein oh that's before I talk about that so one, huge thank you to everyone who showed up for the shop update. I keep, my head is just going in like 20 different directions right now. Right? I feel like all of us are there. Um, yeah, so shop update, thank you. The next shop update will be in May um, after Advents. So Advents are going up May 4th at 7 p.m. Eastern. I've gotten questions about how quickly they're going to sell out. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they will sell out. I don't know if people are going to buy it. It's just, it's one of those things. And I really thought about pushing it to June, but I want to start dyeing them. And I'm not, there are dyers that know theirs are going to sell out. I don't know that. <laughs> Mine have never sold out. So I don't feel comfortable dying 200 advents before they're sold. <laughs> it just doesn't feel responsible to me. Um, so, so I am going to put them up in May, but I would under, I want you to know there is no pressure to buy one. There is no pressure, 100%. You do not need it, right? It's not a necessity. We, it's something that a lot of us want. It's super fun and I totally get it, but this is such a weird time. Don't feel like you need to buy it. I appreciate it. I really, really appreciate it, but I also understand. As someone who can't just buy advent calendars, like I totally get that side of it so there's that and so I'm putting up half in May and then half either at the end of June or beginning of July I haven't decided yet and then that will be that so so yeah that's where that's where I'm at I just want I just don't ever want anyone I know I'm not responsible for what you do, but I just never want anyone to feel obligated to purchase anything from me. So, yes. I just want to put that out there. Um, but I do appreciate it because bills are also important. It's just, it's such a weird thing. I don't know. It makes me feel weird. Um, yeah, so that's why I decided to do it in May, just so I can get started on them. Um, and also kind of gauge if people want them, that kind of thing. I'm super excited about it. I already have eight of the colorways planned. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be super cool. It's going to be really pretty. Um, yeah, and I'm also reaching out to other makers for collaborations. I have no idea if they're going to happen we'll see. Got some plans up my sleeve. So yes, um, the next shop update will be, my assumption is the second week of May because I'm still waiting on one, my box of Surrey. I'm starting to die tonight. So, so yeah, we'll see. We'll just see what happens. We'll, we'll just be surprised together. Does that sound okay? Um, 
now that I've rambled about that and the entire podcast, let's talk about what's actually in the shop if you are interested in buying something right now. So the bases that I have the most of are Squishy, Halo, and DK. Um, I just pulled Halo to show you, but DK, there is Ophelia, Dahlia, Pillow Mint, um, Eucalyptus, SSDGM Grubby, and then Squishy, there's I Smell Snow, Bell Jar, Sweet Disposition, Prudence, My Jam, Pillow Mint, Perfectly Adequate, and a few others. Um, but I'm going to show you what is left on Halo, Cloud, and Favorite. Did I get them? No. Okay, so on Favorite, four colorways. I have a skein of each of I Smell Snow, SSDGM, and Stay Home. It's just so funny that this was named in uh, last year's advent calendar. It's just so appropriate. So stay home. And then the only tonal I have left is Betty, which I love. I love Betty. It's just a perfect blue. So that's what I have left on favorite. On cloud, I have palm lines. I think I have one, one skein of dusk, one skein of palm lines one skein of Rust Belt, and um, two Bell Jar, so hard to show because it's so white, two of Bell Jar, three of Mountain Mama, five, yep, five of Perfectly Adequate. I love. Cloud is perfect. It's perfect. And then um, on Halo, I have four to six skeins of all of these. So My Jam, Bell Jar, Sweet Disposition, Where Does the Good Go, Betty, and Eucalyptus. Oh, so that is everything that is in the shop right now. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who supported me on Monday. It means the world. Do you hear Eliza? She's throwing herself. Um, yeah, it just means the absolute world. So thank you. And I will talk to you next week.